Welcome to the extraordinary journey of Apostle Arome Osai, a man who faced more than just life's usual challenges. His story takes us into a world of spiritual battles far beyond what we see. Apostle Osai grew up in a family where fighting unseen forces was a daily reality. Instead of battling ordinary problems, they faced necromancers. You heard that right. These are mysterious beings with powers over life and death that communicate with the dead and hell. This journey is inspired by a powerful truth from the Bible. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12, which tells us that our real battles are not against people, but against hidden dark forces in the spiritual world. After the loss of his father, Apostle Osai's life took a new turn. He went on a deep personal quest, seeking truth and a closer connection with God, which led him to fast for 264 days. His story isn't just about overcoming grief, it's about finding light in the darkest of times. Apostle Lasai's journey teaches us about inner strength and faith and how they can change our lives. Stay with us as we share the inspiring story of Apostle Laram Lasai and how he took on the necromancers in his family. It's a tale of faith, heavenly encounters and spiritual awakening. Learn how one man's deep faith brought light into a world of darkness. Join us on this adventure to discover how spiritual battles are fought and won and how faith can bring light to the darkest parts of our world and our hearts. Hmm. It's obvious you didn't grow up in my kind of family. That's why you are like this. Have you ever fought a necromancer? If you drink water, you can't fight him. If your feet touches the ground, even in New York, you will appear on the on the screen. The only two things you will do to fight a necromancer and survive: don't drink water and don't put your feet on the ground. Just a minute before we go ahead to continue this very interesting story being told by Apostle Aroma Osai, we need to put things in perspective. Now, he's going to go into further details. Now, watch this next clip right here so you can fully understand who a necromancer is and how they are operating in the church and why every child of God needs to be very careful when they go to church because this is where you need discernment of the spirit. Watch what Apostle Aroma Osai had to say in this next clip and we will be right back pastor went and brought a necromancer and there is one thing that travels with the necromancer because necromancy is the ability to consult the dead to hear the voices of hell that's what we have in our cultures as um as a, 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 to hear the voices of the dead to consult with the dead the wisdom to consult with the dead that's necromancy one thing that travels with necromancy is what we call the shadow of death a necromancer carries the shadow of death so a necromancer can come here and help 12 people hmm? he can help 12 people and it's as if there are miracles for 12 people but he will go with three people the shadow of death will be casted on three people so that when he leaves those people will now die so he goes around with the shadow of death that is how he offers the sacrifices that powers what he does. Anywhere he goes, you, if you trace it very well, you find the dead. People is littered with death. And so after the service, and normally if they can touch you on the head like this, they have dropped the shadow. After the service, one of our mothers ran to me that she had a dream that a, the minister that came to minister in their church laid hands on her and that place became black. And from there, some maggots were sucking her blood. So she ran to me, and then only for us to see yesterday, someone that was in that service that the man touched, the soul is already taken. Meanwhile, it's happening in church, and the average believer doesn't have the eyes to discern who is a prophet and who is a diviner and who is a necromancer. It's an occult invasion. It's the end time agenda of the kingdom. Yes, my scripture. He said, all that useth divination, or an observer of times, astrology, or an enchanter, or a witch. Who is an enchanter? An enchanter is another name for his, a, a sorcerer because he uses enchantments and he uses spells to change the natural realm, to bring supernatural influence on the natural plane. If you find there are several people 
what they speak as tongues is not tongue but the holy spirit needs to educate you to know that that one is not tongue. there's no way you can know it by hearing physically it will sound like every other one but you see when that kind of tongue goes up and you have the gift of discernment of spirit you will feel as if that thing is piercing you that one is not tongues that is enchantment that person is giving instructions to demons are you doing times of great revivals at times of great invasion of the body of christ from the occult if we take an inventory of churches in Makodi, you might find out, you might find out to you all this may that many of what we call churches in this city are occult platform, occult platform. Let me tell you a story before we begin to go deeper. Hallelujah. Now, there's a woman, a woman, in the 80s, she was arrested in one of the meetings as a witch that came to attack the minister in the 80s. So the power of God arrested her and the ministers gathered. And they began to pray and began to pray and began to pray and they disarmed her you know oh you don't know there's a type of deliverance you can do it will change the face of the sky hmm? cloud will cover the moon and hide it because of that thing that you're doing and that's the kind of deliverance that i'm talking about those people are working with high powered spirits oh you don't know lagos there's one music minister that rules in lagos when when she's singing people get healed she was most sought after and then a prophet in the land an unknown man in fact this prophet never went to the university a raw prophet that was raised i know his father in the law that prophet now invited this praise and worship singer to church to his church they say how much does she charge they say those days she charged she charges a hundred thousand so they gathered the money they, they contributed the church and brought her it was a setup then she began to sing. Then the prophet now took a mic, his own mic. Hmm? He was moving like, like this. She was singing. And then she was now complaining that she was not flowing. So when the prophet began to minister, she was arrested. That kind of... Hmm. May the Lord help us. So having gotten that profound exhortation on the definition of a necromancer and the dangers that are being posed in our churches by means of people who are operating in necromancy, but posing to be pastors and apostles and prophets. Now let's get back to this very important video. I haven't gotten this important perspective. There is water in Coke. If you say you want to be drinking wine, the water, if it's one drop of water that comes into your system, you will appear. Men of flesh and bone cannot contend with necromancy. Yes, that's the priesthood that was in my family. I'm here today because they failed. They lied. Don't be quick to say hallelujah. Calm down. Let me tell you my journeys. Let me tell you how I sleep. Let me tell you the life I live for years. It's easy to say hallelujah. It's easy to, to say that. How many days do you eat in a year and sleep? So I went in search of God after my dad died. I said I won't come back until I find Jesus. A good man, a good Christian, prays morning and evening. Still here, they took him out. The doctors that operated him after the i was hearing their whisper they said there was no need to have operated this man so it was still the manipulation that led to that operation what kind of product is your refinery producing <laughs> i found jesus 264 days of fasting. Then he sent me four angels. Then I stopped fasting. I didn't know I was not disciple. I was not taught that if Jesus wants to encounter you, he will send angels first. If you are satisfied with the angelic encounters, he will not come. I think I'm... Let me keep my stories. <laughs> you reign forever. Your name is ever great. 
You are the weeds done before time began. <laughs> you reign forever. Your name is ever great. You are the weeds done before time began. The sent angels, four of them. Then I stopped fasting. That's where the power dimension began in my ministry. I did that for five years. Then it occurred to me that it was no angels I was looking for. I continued the fast again after five years. Before Jesus came. When I saw the Lord, I knew there was nothing darkness could invent that had as much majesty. If you know how to deploy your refinery and you, you keep it running, you will see the Lord. He will come to you. It's a root, a gate into deep spirit dimensions. You are the weeds long before time began. So that's the theory. We'll do practical. I have 35 minutes. I will finish before then. In a moment of time, where you are seated, you want to take a moment and speak in the Holy Ghost. You know, some of you are not... <laughs> uh, when I encountered what I encountered, I went back and the darkness was too easy to cut off. Too easy. That's why I'm alive. I saw something that is stronger than what darkness planted in my family. And it's been there for generations. But one man that touches light can bring to naught what has lasted for 43 generations. Mm -hmm. We're going to take some time and exercise our spirit. Because I want to teach you how to touch God. Today, it takes five minutes to do that. First of all, empty your heart. Forget about your husband sitting close to you. Forget about the person sitting by your side. And zero in on God. And begin to exercise your spirit. Your desire to encounter God, let's sustain it in your, in your soul. As you use your spirit to prosecute the process. Are you still with me? Can we try for a few minutes and see if we will touch God? A few minutes. Forget about your neighbor. Forget about your neighbor. Ia sokema boskata boku ria mai kofrasata bego lahambre isko menaite yendo bresko falante ski dobo nde shkamina salato kila brasketoria ai kosesila ma abresko de gabila neno santoria brisko falata breska manteli. Yamo sekote de himbre kuskete mahadoli mahasketola brahaisko menazi sakentobe na kadelike talibo kuskete Musa azeso se kabanta elokaria mia selibonde braski tomokuri kasantoria brahabatala babonde ikoska masataria Thank you Lord in the name of Jesus. So two minutes. It takes two minutes to touch me. If you are in alignment, two minutes. It's two minutes by the clock. I want to demonstrate what power is. And the reason why I asked us to pray is because the power gives the glide on the wings 
of the revelational gifts. The power of God goes in the direction of the will of God. The power of God goes in the direction of the proceeding word of God. So if you want to command power, you must have a way to hear the proceeding word of God from the mouth of God. Just like I saw in the spirit. I saw a lady that is in this congregation. And this lady that is in this congregation was selected even before you were formed in your mother's womb to be a carrier of the presence of God. And what I mean by that is that you are supposed to carry God's presence to different places. And I saw two angels descend from heaven. And these two angels had a linen garment in their hands. And when I began to inquire, I found out that that linen garment is the mantle of God's presence. So as I speak now, in the next 17 seconds, that lady that is supposed to be a carrier of God's presence, that mantle will come upon that lady in 17 seconds. No amen, please, no amen, no amen, no amen. In 17 seconds. Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask from my left hand side to my right hand side, to the back of the hall, that lady that is supposed to carry your presence, let your hand drop on it. Let your mighty hand drop on her. I see an anointing coming from heaven and this anointing that I see coming from heaven is an anointing that will enable the bearer to be able to hear the audible voice of God. And there are three people in this congregation that God will put that anointing upon. It is coming. 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 Holy Ghost. We are still in the lecture. So what you are seeing here is power. It is noisy. It is boisterous. It is it is the instrument of advertisement. If Jesus wants to catch the attention of a city, what he does is that he releases power. Oh, I see in the spirit a young man. This young man, you have a calling of an evangelist. The anointing that I see that God wants to give you is an anointing that will give you competence, capacity to expel all kinds of devils. All kinds of devils. And this young man, the anointing will come on you in the next 21 seconds because, oh my God, the, what God wants to accomplish to your life is so intense, so great, so great. And that anointing will come upon you to, to kickstart the process. Father, anywhere the young man is, on this plain ground, on the balcony, towards the, oh my God, it's already coming. The, the grace of God, the oil, the oil is coming. The oil is coming. The oil is coming. The oil is coming. It is coming. So this, this, this is how power looks like. Oh, now listen, listen to me. Now the Lord just wants me to say this to someone. And the person I'm talking about, you've been looking for your international passport. You've been looking for your international passport. Your international passport has not been within reach. Where are you? Stand up on your feet. 
he said you have been looking for your international passport bro come you are the wisdom before I am begun you reign forever your name is ever great you are the wisdom before time began. looking for your international passport go that way you reign forever your name is ever great ah, okay 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 now the lord wants to as i see the bible i see the scriptures open the lord wants to transmit the teaching anointing to someone your name is ever great. So it will happen in 12 seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. That lady there, there's one lady there. Come. Yeah. No, you with her tie. Come. Yeah. You are the one I'm looking for. So come, let me give you what God is offering. Climb up here. Now, the power of God, like I said, it goes in the direction of the voice of God goes in the direction of the will of God. The moment you can access the will of God, power will accompany it. Are you there? Now, the Bible is going to open to you in its most strange way, especially if you accept that you will teach it. Eh? You, you, you saw me in your dream uh, last two weeks. Okay, the Lord wants to accomplish the reason for which he showed you. This, what is coming to you is the grace to explore the scriptures, to find the counsel of God in the scriptures. So this is power. Hey, can we speak in the Holy Ghost for a moment, for a moment of time? Something is opening here. I believe you enjoyed that powerful encounter as we draw close to an, on this profound journey with apostle aroma osai we have witnessed a remarkable display of spiritual power and divine grace it is a reminder of the scriptural truth found in first corinthians chapter 2 verse 4 through 5 my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words but with a demonstration of the spirit's power so that your faith may not rest on human wisdom but on God's power. Today, we have seen the unseen become visible, felt the touch of the divine power of God in our midst, from the revelation of mantles descending upon chosen vessels to the transmission of an anointing for teaching the scriptures. Apostle Osai's ministry has been a testament to the power that moves according to the will of God. As Apostle Osai reminds us, the power of God is not just a concept, it is a living, breathing reality that can transform lives and destinies. It is a power that transcends time and space, bringing the wisdom of the ages into our present reality. Let us carry this experience in our hearts, knowing that what we have witnessed is just the beginning of a deeper journey into the hearts of God's word and will. May we continue to seek, to listen, and to be transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. Thank you for joining us in this extraordinary experience with Apostle Aroma Sai. May the insights and revelations shared today resonate within you, guiding and enlightening your path in the pursuit of divine truth. But wait, there's more where that came from. Don't let the story end here. Hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more awe-inspiring tales of faith, favor, and mysteries in the kingdom of God. Stay tuned and join us in exploring more mind-blowing stories that will uplift, inspire, 
and maybe even challenge your beliefs. Remember, each click brings you closer to witnessing another miracle. So, are you ready for the next big revelation? Join our community of believers and let's continue this incredible journey together. Until next time, keep the faith and stay amazed. I remain Grace Daily Motivational, where the extraordinary becomes the normal. See you in our next video.